Hello, hello. Welcome to a little Howie Shanks Bingo League daytime baseball. Let's give it a little time, see if anybody's hanging on out there. Got a double header today, actually. I should change the title. Um, but thought before we get some games going, I've got some time here that uh, I may do a walkthrough here for the manager file. A couple little things that I found out, even if some of us maybe thought that we've selected the right lineups or the lineup we want to use, that there are some options in that manager file that allow you to select some things that look like they were auto selected, which means they're going to rotate through a series um, of lineups. And if all those lineups aren't the same, there's going to be variety that can shock people. Uh, the other thing is we can change that setting to where if you just want a basic save lineup against lefty and one against righty, we'll just make sure that the settings are such where it's only looking for that one, the number one lineup. It's not going to rotate and then go on to the next one. So I think this may be what has caused some people some confusion when they think they've set their lineups correctly. And then they're like, why isn't this AI manager uh, behaving? Hello, Robbie. I think this will give you some insight uh, as before we get going on a double header, I'm going to talk through the manager files. I think what MV and I found out is the late game that um, between my team and Todd's team uh, Beatles posted the BBX, which is written, uh, Robbie, the BBX file is just basically exporting and importing games that are played just to keep the league up to date. So, hey, World's Worst. So what we have is, I think Beatles last night, something wasn't right. So I imported it and it still isn't showing uh, if we go here to look at uh, our scheduled game. It still isn't showing last night on the 7th. See, we have these played. It still isn't showing that played game. So we want to. We don't want to play any more games today between Detroit and Cleveland until we get that uh, export from Beatles who played the game and catch up. But we can still play other games today as long as it's not Detroit or Cleveland. So if we look at the calendar today, my goal here is to knock out the Robbie MV matchup. We got a, a game one and then a game two, a double header at Manchester. So that'll be fun. But let's go right to the manager file. Let me talk about what I found. So let's pull up Robbie's. Okay. And here we go, Robbie. Here's what your manager file will be. So if I'm you, I go in here, got your team set up. I picked a ballpark today for uh, the Rangers ballpark. Uh, if I go to manager up here for my team, let's click on that. I can say manager preferences. And you can see right here that I noticed for a lot of people, look at these boxes, occasionally sub for real life, trying to replicate real life, which means variety in your lineups and advanced next lineup after each game. So look at this. You'll notice that I think there are one, two, three, four, five versus lefty and five versus righty. So when these boxes, when this box right here is checked, I'm just unchecking them. That will, and let's say next lineup should be one, next lineup should be number one, because what I think people have done is they went to their lineup here and say daily or a regular lineup, and they've probably, let's load up Robbie's, versus left, you'll see this lineup, for example, and if they had that box checked to rotate or advance, this would allow you to vary it up a little bit. So you could have five different lineups where maybe different people are getting in and getting at bats. And then you do that setting and it'll just go versus left one, two, three, four, five, and then rotate through them. So it allows you to build in variety. What I think for people that just maybe had a dedicated lineup one, which was me, by the way, okay? and a dedicated lineup too, when we have this box over here checked, it's going to make it rotate to the next one. So if you just want one lineup, we got to make sure that the, that box is unchecked and that the next lineup will always be number one versus left, number one versus right. Now, if you've taken the time to build three, four, or five different versions of lefty and righty, then if you want to, then maybe you come over here and check, I want it to rotate and go down to lineup two and then three and then four, right? So MV, I might have already fixed some of these people that I knew were having issues. So we'll go to Manchester. 
we will look at, we load lineup versus left one. Let's see if there's a different one for two. Yep, I already see. Bassler's in for two, where on one, Glasscock was on here. So we've seen a little bit of difference with the catcher in there. So if we go to MB's team, manager preferences, I think I removed that for you yesterday, MV. So if you want it to just stay on one versus left, one versus right, we, we need this to be unchecked. Well, I know, I know it was one of the problems, Robbie. Guaranteed it was the problem because I hadn't paid attention to this until I went and checked my team because the other night Beatles was doing a game and I had a, um, oh, what was it? Ivy Wingo was DHing, and I'm like, how the hell did that guy get in there? Well, you know what it was? When I went and looked at my team settings, I was in the same boat. I I had generated some default um, computer things, right? Or it, it'll generate it its own. And I had just focused on my lineup versus left. That's who it should have been. Lineup versus right. So I was focused on, oh, I'm sorry, that's save. L lineup versus right. See, you'll see there's no Wingo. And I'm like, how did that happen? So if we go down and search number two, there's Wingo. So I found out that my box was checked to rotate for the next game down to the other one. So I went in here, uh, wrong button right here. And I, I went in right here, let me get out of here, and looked at my manager preferences. And here we go. I need to get rid of that. Because that's what happened last night when I looked and I said, why in my second game is that lineup in there? And it's because my second, let me save that right here. Oh, another thing I need to do. Let me go back to here and show you. I need to make sure, look look at where it's at now. I need to go back here and say, no, keep it at one. I just want to go with the one, the number one lineup. Don't let it advance. Hit OK. And guess what? I'm good now. That's exactly what had to happen, Robbie, because it it, drew, it drove me bonkers. I was like, why the heck is Ivy Wingo in there? Well, guess what? I didn't pay attention. Now, one thing I could do to override it is I could make this lineup repeat for all five, but that's a little tedious because all I have to do is go over here and uncheck it. So it's not going to rotate and I tell it what the next lineup's going to be. Now, if we get more advanced and you want to alter with a little flavor, maybe you're trying to get somebody some more playing time in this league then maybe, you know, you have two lineups, right? Or you have three where maybe, uh, like for me, Willie Wilson gets a little playing time in left field or uh, at DH or Dick Allen does. But to me, that's kind of an advanced move that the manager needs to know that they intend to have a variation. Then they want it to advance, and then they pay attention over here to what all those variations are. Otherwise, you'll see the asterisk. Make sure the main one with the asterisk one and one is the way you want it go over here make sure this is unchecked and then make sure this isn't set like it's already been used going to some weird one make sure this is set that next one is one next one is one no advancing i go over here and i look at my lineups looks good looks good and now i'm good So for Robbie, here's what I'll say. So when you get the manager set up the way you want it, and let's say we want other manager preferences, Big Clue tweaked his a little. Like he went in and changed some of these average settings to, um, I think he dropped his bunt down to just sometimes. So this is where you can really tweak like your overall strategy. Um, do you want to pull? I see a lot of us are letting people have runs. I think World's Worst Gamer said, I'm not letting anybody go over six. So you could say pull starter after six runs. Boom. And it'll ask you for verification. You can do that right here. Okay. Um, player usage preference. Look at this. We wonder why they're recommending certain starters because we're just basing off real life. We can change that here. Player quality. So this is a nice button here. I've never really mentioned with that because a lot of times if a pitcher started 50 games, that's why they might be your preferred one, even though the quality is lower. So you can come down here and reset depths and lineups. In fact, I might do that. Let's do that. Real life usage. 
Yes, reset depths and lineups, do it. Now let's go over to my team and take a look at my lineups. Okay, there's still one I need them to be, but if we look at depth, okay, maybe it makes changes, maybe it doesn't, but something to pay attention to, right, is we tweak what those look like. If we go to our save lineups, this is a quick tab to be able to say, see, I don't even have any against three and, and four now. So I'm going to save myself aggravation right there. One versus right. Look what happened. Put Wingo back in. So I'm going to go with I like this one. I like Willie Wilson. So I got one versus right Willie Wilson in there, and I'm going to go two versus right. I might change that a little bit. Let me go back to this view here. Key is if you get in here and mess around, make sure it's all good before you leave. So let's log one versus left. I've got Ivy Wingo at DH. No, thank you. Because since I ran that, it did all this. Uh, yeah, all the lineups are available. It is a lot of work, Robbie. I think, uh, and see, since I just had it apply player quality and run re uh, a new depth, I need to go back and do things like this. Rotation. See, I've got to go back and make sure my rotation's good because I'm going with a four-man rotation here. So I'm going to put Bob Gibson. I want Koufax second. I want Dot Gooden here. I want, uh, I think I got Mike Scott here. I've got Newhauser as my spot starter along with Dutch Leonard. I think I've got uh, Jim Turner down here. Awesome. Go to bullpen. That's fine. I can tweak with that a little bit later. So now I've got my rotation the way I want it. Bullpen's okay for now. Let's take a look at my lineups here. I have to go back and figure it out. So I've got right field. I know I want Chino Smith versus lefties. And let me do my OPS versus right. I like to get this set up. Versus righties. Dick Allen's really good against righties, so I want him in at DH. I want Zobrist out, and I want Charlie Smith. hate looking at it this way all the time. Let's get Charlie Smith. Right field. And Hornsby is going to be at second base. We get this set up right. Lead off. Hornsby, Mays, uh, hold on, where's Allen is first base. I've got Klazuski out against lefties. And Zobrist is maybe my DH. Okay, so I'm going to save that as lineup one versus left. And let's load lineup versus right and see what we've got. OPS versus right. Right here. Big clues in there. I want out Albert Bell and left.
this is the one I want. Willie Wilson, DH. Save as lineup versus right. So I think I'm pretty good right here. So if I load versus left, got the people I want in there. Zobris is my DH. Allen's playing first. So anyway, I'm good right there. So now I can go back to my manager profile, hit this, make sure that I'm not advancing. But I may end up doing a couple variations, and then maybe I say advance to the lineup, and maybe I have two that are the same, one in the middle different, two that are the same, and there's some kind of rotation. But anyway, it is, Robbie. And people say, like, if for Baseball for Windows, you say, oh, these managers – there's more variety you can get here than even with baseball for windows. They've just set, they've preset it all up to be like a, a, a certain style. You could come in here and create your own style too. Like, do you want to steal a lot more hit and run, do a lot of pinch hitting? Um, like when do you start, you know, guarding lines or bringing in um, pitch aggressive and all that you can do it. But the other thing you can do beyond just this is you can go to the player themselves and you can get this a variety of ways, but go to their usage tab right here or, or manager tab. Each player, you can drill down even deeper. So you can have general team managerial tendencies, but you could also come here and say, you know, never pull this guy for a pinch runner. Ne you know, never do this, never do that. Same is true with pitchers. So if we look at pitchers, I could come here to, to uh, Bob Gibson and say, when I manage him, I could say, pull after, boom eight runs, right? Maybe I give him a higher threshold than some or, you know, pull starter after seven runs, something like that. Pinch hit. We're not doing pinch hitter here, but you get the idea, right? So you, there's so much you can do as a general manager for your team setting up lineups and tendency, but then you can get right down to how do you want to manage this player? Um, <sighs> There we go. So with that, hopefully that's helpful. Now, Robbie, when it comes to games, I'll give you an example. Like, let's say I had played all the games in our league and I want to export them to get them to people. Here's what we do. We go right up to export and it will look, it says export games. It will go here and it'll pull up every game that we've played. Now you'll notice I'm caught up, except I don't have that late night game that Beatles put up there because of the BBX file that I downloaded for that Detroit Cleveland game last night. I think he missed something or maybe didn't check it because if I wanted to export, I could just say, hey, I want to export this game. Or I could go here and select all of them, right? Select all and export every one of them. Like, let's say I, I played all seven games in a row. I could hit yes, export them all. And then when I go to export, I don't have to take, what I found is I don't have to take this goofy name it's given me. I can go right up here, clean it and say, I could say games played by Steve on 4-7-23. I could give it any name I want. Okay. And then I can tell it where to go. So what I'm finding out is easier is I just keep it in my main folder for the game here, but I could go in here and declare where I wanted it to go and before I hit export, make sure that this line is actually pointed at where I want it to go. Um, I created a desktop folder here just for me. And it's called, I think it's Shanks Bingo League Files, right? So I could say games played by Steve on 4.7. I'm wanting to export it there, but when I look up here, I couldn't figure out why it wasn't going there because it wasn't finding that. So I've just decided I'm going to just let it go into the game folder so I know what folder to go into and hunt down that file to, to grab it and, po and post it. So um, you could select download uh, baseball seasons, right? I could say league folder. So if I go right to league folder as a default right here, it's going to take this file that I've named and it's going to put it right in my Howie Shanks bingo. So now that I've selected all of these, I hit begin export, okay? And then I go right to my league folder, which is right here. I think this has been the hardest point for a lot of us, even myself to get reacquainted is 
where do we put these files so we can go find them and we can give them a, a specific name because it's easier to find. So I go to my Howie Shanks Bingo Draft League and I'm looking for games. Um, let's go to G. I've got so much stuff in here, right? Here. Games played by Steve on 4723. I copy that. Then I can go right into Discord here. And I'll just uh, put this as a test. I can go to our right here, paste, boom, it's right there. Let me hit return, and then that's what we would do. So if you played one game, this is basically for um, Beatles and myself and um, MV. Once we're all caught up, we can just export the single game versus all seven. But you know what? If you imported all seven and you already had some of the games played, it's going to it's gonna notice that you're overriding games that are already in your file and not put them there twice. Um, so you can take either approach. So I'm going to delete that now because this was just an example. But um, if anyone... Um, So if anybody wants to practice, Robbie, I'm just declaring that this is all the games that we've played minus the Beatles game that we're still going to have to have him put in there. And if you wanted to practice, Robbie, you could go grab this file now that it's at our lineups and staff. OK, and you could download it somewhere and then you could copy and paste it and just paste it wherever, wherever the league file you're using, whatever name that is for our league. You could just paste it in there into that league file and then. When you go to your league file, you go to import games and it will list all the different BBXs that are there. And then if you hit yes, you can import it and it'll bring it right in and it'll update your file to be current with those games. Yeah, and MV saying he just takes the exported ones. And if he's up to date and these are just the missing games that he needs to add, it works great. You know, so for example, I could, when I play the games today, I will go up and hit export and I will end up ex hitting just the two, which is going to be a double header with Robbie and MV. And I'll just pick those and load that. That way MV knows I can just grab these two. I've already got the others, but. Um, either way will work because if you went to import MV, the one that I just downloaded, it'll it'll inform you each time that this game is already there. This game is already there. So um, it'll be smart enough to know not to override it. Correct. And what we can do today is and this can happen in the league is so that we don't get out of order because we need the right, you know, tiredness and pitching. Um, EPC and pitches and all that stuff to, to go the right way is I'm about ready to fire up a game and have some fun here. But you'll notice since we're waiting for this one game right here on the seventh that we still need, I don't want to do anything in the future for either of these two teams. So today for our until Beatles gets on and get and we get that BBX squared away, the one game we can't play is Detroit and Cleveland until the prior day's game gets taken into account and both MV and I or Beatles has that. Um, if Beatles wanted to do that game later tonight, he could do it and then update us with both. But this game's off limits for MV and I, so I MV can have at it. There's another double header with Ocean State and Sarnia that he could go for later if he has time. But I'm going to right now fire up and uh, let's do some Arlington Manchester. Yeah. And agree MV. So it may not be till t tomorrow that we get that Detroit Cleveland, but at least we can get through and see what we can do here with these games. And we definitely wouldn't want to sim any future dates or move ahead until this game right here on the seventh gets accounted for. So very good point. So uh, anybody give me a thumbs up. I do have some uh, time here during my lunch, and I'm hoping I can get this double header in. Really looking forward to it. Uh, the other thing with the double headers is just as we play, this is for MV and Beatles, you know, always look at this is for the day. This is the first game. This is the second game. 
just go ahead and uh, yeah, go Manchester. So I'm going to set this to human human. And in MV, I may have some experimental music for your team today at home. Just checking some things out. Let's play this game, shall we? So we've got a couple managers here today. So let's take a look at uh, the lineups. And I'm going to load the lineups I have saved for you all. Let's see what the uh, computer says for pitchers. Computer says Barry Zito for you. Your first starter here, Robbie, was uh, Stratton, and now it's offering Zito. But you let me know if you want me to set this right now, and I'll be happy to do it. So Stratton pitched your first game. Yep, he threw 102 pitches. So let me know right now, Robbie, who you'd like in. And if you want me to establish this for you, um, until you have a chance to kind of do your manager file and export it. And while Robbie's looking at that, we also have to figure, Robbie, we don't have it done yet, but you've got to let us know which five on your roster should be inactive because we've got to be trimmed down from 30 to 25. Okay, so good. Zito's in there for you. Uh, one thing, Robbie, that we did to help people out is we went over here like you've got Neil Allen with your high whip. What we did is we had to pick five to, to deactivate. So we just started as a group figuring out who the weakest five on the roster might be based on their whip or their on-base percentage plus slugging. But um, let us know which five you'd like inactive. Alomar's pretty low, but you need him. He's your main catcher. So let me go, well, Robbie might be thinking, and maybe we, uh, let's go to line up and view opponent. MV. Um, what are we loading for you, MV? Line up one versus left. MV, tell, give me a thumbs up if that's the right one. This is the one that we've got saved for you as your line up versus left. think that's the right one. We have your manager tendencies to not rotate and it's stuck on one and one. So you should be good there. If we look at your rotation, I believe we're good there, which means we've got um, I'm assuming we want to go with Vita Blue. Oh, with Randy the pitch. So we've seen the Grom. Yes. Okay. Well, let's check this out. If we go computer lineup for you, it's smart enough. So that lets me know when I hit computer lineup, it loaded the lineup that it should have, and it load up the correct uh, Randy Johnson, if you notice that. So when I hit computer lineup for you, all of that's right. That's a good sign. Now I can go over here. Um, yeah, you can review, Robbie. We just I, I figured Neil Allen would be one because he's your he's your worst pitcher, and since you got a trim it down to five. We can worry about that going forward here and cut you a little grace here today because um, I don't think all the players are going to get in, but it would be figuring out which five of your 30 you would like to have inactive. Um, for Robbie, let's see. We are going to loan up, load up versus left. Take a look at your uh, lineup there, Robbie, and see if that looks satisfactory to you.
and I can get the batting on base percentage versus left. So you can see uh, you've got some lefties that aren't bad against lefty, but um, who knows? It's got oh yeah, he's got Buck Leonard at first still. Cap Anson's on the bench. So I'll give you a minute here, Robbie, if you want to take a look at that and let me know any changes you might want to that. And I would say definitely after today's doubleheader, Robbie, go spend some time and tinker around with your lineups. And then uh, you can always, once you get them there, export that manager file and post it on the, uh... yes, MV, no doubt. I will export the doubleheader. Perfect. No problem. No problem at all, Robbie, at all. Um, and we're going to stop with the Detroit to Cleveland. But I'd say, Robbie, we, we're good for the game here. But let me know definitely if you want to, um, you know, when you spend some time this weekend or whatever, looking at that manager file, we can definitely update that. All you have to do is when you get your settings, you just go up to export the manager. And just like with the box scores, you, you tell it where you want to put that file, and then you just go copy that. It'll have an extension. I think it's .man on the end. And then you can post that in Discord, and then we can I can grab it and um, upload that into the game file. Same thing with MV and Beatles and make sure that we've got it. What I'm thinking I'm going to do here uh, after I play the doubleheader today is I will make a complete copy because what I've got now is We've changed some of the names around. We've got a little bit more. Uh, Robbie, I put your ballpark information in. So the actual game file is more up to date with names and all that and park assignments. So it's probably time to post for our overall group a uh, an updated file so that if Beatles and uh, MV are playing games, they have all of that stuff in there as well. So away we go. Yes, we know Arlington's over. We're giving them a cutting of some break. So here we go. We are at Ebbets Field. Ebbets Field today. What do we got? Calm, a little bit of drizzle, 58 degrees, light rain. Play ball! Let's see what we got. I'm going to shut my door here, see if my dogs continue taking a nap here and give me a little break today for a while. So we got Randy Johnson on the mound. This is the second game for both these teams. Uh, I think it was two days ago that they last played here at Ebbets Field. Uh, we got Juan Pierre leading things off. Uh, so I'm just gonna computer, computer it until you guys throw the hand up and you wanna do something special. I think that's how we do this. So here we go with the first pitch of the game. Johnson to Pierre and Pierre grounds it to Joe Morgan and he throws it to Garrett for the out and we've got one away. Here's a player that I've no idea before kit carpenter the other cool thing about this league is learning about some of these players so pretty good third baseman right he's a nine fielder 1882 bank street is where uh he comes from so robbie uh, got a person here i've never heard of before when he drew 1882 for the draft uh 342 hitter and a nine third baseman so pretty good pickup here's the pitch from randy johnson and Carpenter sends this one up the middle, and he's aboard with a hit. And Willie Wells today, big hitter from the Negro Leagues, over a 1 OPS, and he's in the DH role today because Lindor will be manning shortstop for the Sharks. Well, here's the pitch to Wells, and Johnson strikes Wells out. We've got two away now, and the cleanup hitter for the Sharks, Buck Leonard, stepping up. Another uh, great pick. So you can see Robbie's two picks back-to-back -back from the Negro League draft, those two rounds, Willie Wells and Buck Leonard, uh, batting third and fourth in his lineup. Here's the pitch from the big unit, and this one's on the ground. Ooh, Randy Johnson, with good range, makes the play, gets the out at first, and we're going to the bottom of the first to see MV's beloved Red Bolts. And getting the start today at short is bad Bill Dolan. Let's look at Bill Dolan. This is a pretty good pickup, too. 
MV is kind of like a blind squirrel. He'll wander around for a while and uh, find a nut at some point in his life, right, as they say. So he's done a great job here as he came across Bad Bill. And 1894 Westside Park, 357 hitter, a 10 shortstop. So gold glove material. This is a really good shortstop he's got. And here's Bill Dolan. And he puts the bat on the ball. It's going back deep. George Bell playing left is going to be able to make that catch. Al Rosen. Little walk-up music for the home team here. Here's Al Rosen. Pitch from Barry Zito. Rosen sends this one out to center. Juan Pierre, great range out there, makes the catch, and we've got two away. Here is slamming Sammy Sosa. Pitch from Zito, and he sends this one out to left field. George Bell right there makes the easy catch, and we've been through one, zero to zero. So here's Jesse Barfield up for uh, Arlington. Take a look at Jesse based on the 86 season. The pitch from Johnson, and he grounds it to Rosen at third, makes the throw in time to Gehrig for the first out. So here's George Bell, 1987. Everybody remembers that's a great year for a couple American leaguers. Um, George Bell and Alan Trammell, for sure. Here's the pitch from Randy Johnson. George Bell puts this on the ground. Rosen. With the throw over to Gehrig, two away. And here is the shortstop, uh, Francisco Lindor. 38 home runs based on 2018. A nine shortstop, eight double play pivot, and a great batting uh, line with power, 38 home runs. So. He steps in against Johnson, and Johnson gets the strikeout to end the inning. Lefty O'Doul steps in. He's two for three on the year coming into this game. Had a great first opening game for Manchester, and he sends this one out to right field. Barfield with great range out in right field and a great arm. He's a 10 range and a 10 arm. little period-specific music for Lou Gehrig, the Iron Horse. There's the pitch from Zito, lefty on lefty, and Gehrig draws a walk. Little Joe Morgan. Joe Zito, or Joe Zito, I'm combining two names. Barry Zito, pitching to Joe Morgan. Joe Morgan draws a walk. That Joe Morgan, man. I'm always envious. I'd love to have him with my second baseman. Jack Glasscock, the shortstop. 0 for 4 in his first game. Looking to bring his bat alive. We got one out, two men on. The pitch from Zito. And Glasscock sends this into right field. Could score Garrick. It will. It goes all the way to the wall. Glasscock is in easy with the double. We got runners at second and third. One away. Mike Trout coming up and uh, clutch hit for Jack Glasscock. That's his first hit of the year. And Mike Trout steps in. Trout on the year, one for three. Here's the pitch from Zito. Oh, it gets past Alomar. It scored a pass ball, and that will allow the run to score from third, and we've got a two-to-nothing ball game. Glasscock takes third, and Mike Trout still at the plate. The pitch, and Zito gets it. So we've got a strikeout. Here's the catcher. For the Manchester Red Bolts, Rafael Almeida. It's his first start. Bassler started the first game. It's the first time we've seen Almeida this season. And Almeida draws a walk. First and third.
Here's the pitch to Dolan. Bad Bill up again, and he draws a walk. So Zito into a little bit of trouble here in the second inning. Al Rosen steps in, the third baseman. Clutch situation here for both Zito and Rosen. Here's the pitch, bases loaded. Rosen hits this one out to left field. Bell is tracking over. Looks like he might get it. Oh, no, this one has got enough juice, and just like that, a grand salami. A grand salami for Al Rosen. Four RBIs in. It is a six to nothing game, and Zito isn't looking that great. So let us know, Robbie. He's six runs, but on only two hits. This is a pop up, so. And it's caught, and they are out of the inning. A grand slam. I think that's the first one of the year. I don't know if Big Clue had one in that 15-run offensive extravaganza that uh, you played uh, yesterday, MV. But uh, here we go. Michael Young, the second baseman, hometown favorite for Robbie, no doubt, steps in. And he lines it to bad Bill Dolan for the first out. So Sandy Alomar Jr., the catcher, not known for his bat, great defensive catcher. And he sends it on the ground. Dolan, with great range, makes the play to Gehrig. And we have two away. Top of the order, Juan Pierre steps in. The pitch. Pierre puts this on the ground, and it looks like he's going to get there. And Joe Morgan, the great second baseman, muffs it. Charged E4, and Juan Pierre is aboard the base hit. Well, an error, I should say, not a base hit. Here's the pitch to hit Carpenter. Carpenter puts it on the ground. Bill Dolan to Morgan. Gets the force in second. Lefty O'Duel. Take a look at Lefty's card here as we learn about some of these players. Based on uh, the 1929 uh, Philly team that he was on, batting 398 with an OPS over one. So this is another great hitter that um, MV has. Hey, right up the middle, Lefty O'Duel is aboard with a single. And we've got a the lead runner on board. Here's Lou Gehrig. Pitch from Zito. Gehrig sends this one out to right field. Looks like Barfield's going to be able to catch it. O'Doul tags and will stay at first. And we got little Joe Morgan coming to the plate. Pitch from Zito. Morgan draws another walk. He walked his last time up. Got two aboard. And here's... Uh, Jack Glasscock it doubled in his uh, last time up to right center. And he sends this out to center field. Juan Pierre tracking it down and makes the catch. The one thing I've uh, noticed uh, with this league is we've seen some leads like this, and nobody's really ever out of it with these Wonderful lineups with the depth that we have. Here's Mike Trout. Struck out his first time up in the second inning. Zito with the pitch. And he walks Mike Trout. So we got another bases loaded situation. Rafael Almeida. The pitch. Almeida sends this one down the line. See if it stays fair. Bell tracking over. And he will make the catch to retire the side. So we've played three, and it's a six to nothing Manchester lead. So pretty efficient when you can get six runs out of just three hits. 
We'll see if Robbie and team can get back into it. We got Willie Wells stepping in to face the big unit. And he strikes out. First baseman, Buck Leonard, grounded to the pitchers last time up. Leonard draws the walk. See what Randy Johnson's depth. He can go 110 pitches typically, so he's only given up one hit all day. Here's Jesse Barfield. And he strikes out. So Randy Johnson struck out four so far today, and now he's facing George Bell. A lot of power at the plate, and Bell puts it on the ground. Bid Bad Bill Dowling over to Morgan for the force out, and Randy Johnson looks pretty locked in today. And here comes the Red Bolts. Bill Dolan stepping in. He walked his last at bat. Sends this one down the line. Barfield stepping over. Looks like he has enough room, makes the catch. One away. Here's the hero of the game so far, Al Rosen. One hit, four RBIs. Hit that grand slam down the left field line. The pitch from Zito. Carpenter's got it. Makes the toss over. What happened? Looks like Leonard may have dropped it. Can't dig it out. That will be a throwing error on Carpenter. Scored an E5, and Al Rosen is aboard. Slamming Sammy Sosa. 50 home run season, batting 320. 2,000 slamming Sammy. The pitch from Zito. And it's ball one. Pitch from Sosa. He sends this up the middle. Rosen's rounding second. Won't take third as Pierre gets the ball into the cutoff man. We've now got two aboard here with one out. Here's the pitch to O'Duel. O'Duel sends this one out to center. Pierre's tracking back. He's got it deep. Rosen won't tag. Who allowed that six runs? Hey, world's worst. Look at the hits. There's. Until now, there was only, those six runs were scored on two hits. A grand slam. Here's Garrick. Garrick steps in. He sends this one out to center field. Pierre stepping back. Stepping back. I don't know if it's off. It's out of here. What's up, Big Clue? Welcome. Another grand salami. So, Robbie, I don't know if you're here. It might be time to send uh, Zito to the shower. Take a look at Zito today. Zito's only given up five hits, but two home runs, and he's walked six. And MV saying, hey, let's go bolts. But uh, let me take a look here at Barry Zito. Robbie might be away uh, taking care of stuff. Robbie, I'm about ready to put a reliever in for you now before this thing gets... Uh, okay, who's, here's your bullpen we're looking at right here. So let me know who you might want to come on in, and we'll send uh, Zito to the showers. Oh, I see he's got Roy Face out here. See, he's kind of a middle relief guy starting out. Three finger rounds around. Chief Bender. Mike Garcia. Yeah, we got Mike Garcia. Um, you've, you've got some real relievers. You've got Roy Face. You've got Quisenberry. Juan Acevedo. Um, I'm just looking at some good, maybe middle guys. Yeah, I might. If it was me, I might throw Mike Garcia in here because I don't think he's in your starting lineup. And uh, you'll probably get a lot of innings out of him.
Oh. Nothing's ever over, Worlds. Come on, have some faith. Somebody can come back. All right, Robbie. All right. Ender Mike Garcia to pitch. So here we go. Mike Garcia comes in. Two out here. Another big inning for the uh, Bolts. And now Joe Morgan, who's drawn two walks, is aboard with a single. Here's Glasscock steps up. Morgan takes off for second, and he's in safe with his first stolen base of the year. Now we've got another runner in scoring position, two out. And here is Jack Glasscock. Lined a double. It's flown out today. Yeah, big clue. I've added a lot of extra sounds for some variation. And Glasscock draws a walk. This is the inning that never ends. What's Mike Trout done this year? He's one for four. Hits from Mike Garcia. Trout is struck out. So that inning is finally over. We had three runs, three hits, another home run, and it's a nine to nothing Manchester lead, and it's time to get the bats going for this Arlington team. And here's Francisco Lindor to face the big unit, and Randy Johnson strikes him out. That's five strikeouts today for Johnson. Michael Young, the second baseman, puts it on the ground. Rosen up with the throw. Is it in time? Just barely gets him. Had to hurry, and he's out on a close call. So we've got uh, the catcher, Sandy Alomar. Yeah, call him into your office. Zito, uh, uh, he's got some personal issues going on, Rob. He might need a leave of absence or something. Here's a pitch to Alomar, and he draws a walk. So we get a runner aboard for the top of the order. Juan Pierre coming in, the lefty. Pitch from Randy Johnson, and Pierre puts it on the ground to Rosen. He's seen a lot of action. Up with the throw. Looks like it's in time. It is, and no runs, no hits, no errors. Still a 9 to nothing game. See what MV does if he pours it on. They fall asleep. Who knows? Here's the pitch. Almeida to Carpenter. Hit Carpenter up. In time to Buck Leonard. And that's out number one. Here's Bad Bill Dolan, who has uh, walked once. He's 0 for 2. Here's the pitch. He sends this one out. Should be a hit. Drops down in front of Bell out in the left field, and we've got one aboard. And Al Rosen stepping to the plate. For those of you that might have stepped away like World's Worst Gamer, we can go and take a look at Rosen. In the second, he had a grand slam home run down the left field line that uh, put this game into uh, the situation it's in right now. Pretty lopsided game. Here's a pitch from Garcia, and Dolan is running, and he's in there safe with the stolen base. So MV, no lead is too big enough. Team's still playing aggressive. Here's the pitch with Rosen, and he draws a walk. So we've got two aboard, one away. And slamming Sassy Sosa. Oh, Sosa with the hit out to left field. He's going to stay in. Drifting back as Bell. He makes the catch. Tagging is Dolan, but he won't run. And we've got two aboard still for Lefty O'Duel. Let's look at the Arlington roster since everybody wants to know. This is his rotation. And again, it's no doubt if we go to his pitchers, it was set up because if we scroll by game started, that's exactly what you're going to see. Because what we found out, Big Clue, earlier is if you go into the manager settings, it's defaulted to real life usage. So if you change this and said player quality, you're going to get a whole different result. So Robbie's going to have to go in and do some tweaking to his liking and let us get that new manager file.
And here we go. Lefty O'Dill steps in. He has uh, flied out twice and singled. Here's the pitch. O'Dill sends this one out to, it's like right center field. Pierre with great range. They call that the Kelly Leak Bad News Bears play. He's roaming around and taking balls away from everybody. Hit Carpenter up. Randy Johnson's thrown 80 today, so MV, you know, wave that pink hand in the air like you just don't care when it's time for a change. Pitch to hit Carpenter. Out to left field where uh, lefty O'Dill's playing. And we have one away. Here's Willie Wells. Struck out twice today. And this time he gets the bat on the ball. This one's headed out to left field. O'Dill chasing back. It's like he'll be near the wall. Makes his catch on the warning track. Two down for Buck Leonard. Leonard's grounded out and walked. Here's the pitch. And Leonard strikes out. So that'll end the inning. Here comes the iron horse himself. The pitch from Mike Garcia. It's like he's going to get the dribbler himself. Throws over to first. Gary can't get down there fast enough. And we have hope number one. Little Joe Morgan. He's walked and single. He's an on-base machine. Delivery from Garcia. Morgan sends this one out opposite field. And he's got his second hit. He's reached base all four times he's been at the plate today. And here comes the extremely fragile Jack Glasscock. The pitch. Glasscock lines it. Michael Young snags it. Morgan gets back, and we've got two away. And here comes Mike Trout. Struck out twice today and walked. Here's the pitch, and it gets by Alomar. Morgan's down to second safely. That'll be charged as a pass ball for Alomar. Here's the pitch. Trout into right field. Looks like Morgan's round in third. Barfield's got a gun, but Morgan's easily in. And we've got a 10 to nothing game, folks. And it's not over yet. Okay. MV will get you some relief, but uh, if we ever get your batting turn over here, we'll definitely uh, count for it. Here's Rafael Almeida. He gets a hit out into left field, and Bell scoops it up, gets it into Lindor, and we've got two on for Bill Dolan in an inning that doesn't seem like it wants to end. Here's the pitch to Dolan, and... Mike Garcia gets him to strike out, so we've got a 10 to nothing ball game here going into the seventh. It says Randy Johnson looks fine, but MV says let's get some relief. So uh, let me know what you'd like to do. We can show all your starters here so you can see all your options because I think MV. Oh, there's no mercy, Robbie, and, and you're never out of it. What a fun, interesting game it would be. I mean, I don't know how many people. I know MVs vote on this, but the rest of us watching, would we be opposed to seeing a comeback where 11 runs could actually top MV? I think some of us on here wouldn't mind seeing that. Valenzuela. El Toro, the bull. And here he is. He's in the game now. Just want to see him. Well, there he is. Here's Jesse Barfield. Yes, we know there's a new pitcher. And Barfield uh, sends a single into left field, and now we've seen him. Poor play by Rose, and he wouldn't be able to knock that down. But we've got a base hit. Barfield's on, and here comes George Bell. George Bell hits this one hard, and I think we've seen Valenzuela. Doesn't look all that great. And now Arlington is on the board with a two runs here in the uh, seventh inning. And now it's a 10-2 game. And this is how rallies are made, folks. 
Francisco Lindor steps in. The pitch to Lindor, and Valenzuela gets that strikeout. No, MV's not going to win this league, Robbie. Not going to happen. Here's Michael Young. Sends a high fly out into uh, left where Duel gets it. Makes the second out of the inning. And here is Sandy Alomar Jr. And he strikes out. So, Robbie's got his team on the board with some runs. No, big clue. I've been shut out both games. <laughs> Gibson and Koufax give up one run each. And... Uh, I've got two losses. We just don't. Beatles' uh, BBX file that he downloaded last night didn't isn't the right game. Uh, MV noticed that earlier, and I double checked it. So, any games that MV and I play today, we just can't play myself or Todd's team until we get that right file for Beatles to catch our two teams up. But the rest of them today, we can uh, have some fun with. So here's Al Rosen. As you can see on the day, he's had that big grand slam that led to this lead. So. Here's Garcia. Still looks fine. Al Rosen gets a dribbler back to Young. Able to throw him out in time. Slamming Sammy Sosa. And he pops this straight up. See if it stays in fair territory for Alomar. He's drifting back. He's got room. He makes the catch. So we've got two down for lefty O'Doul. One for four on the day with a single. Sammy Scotch and Sosa, yeah. So an O'Doul walk. So Garcia came in. He's done all right. Eating up some innings here. Barry Zito, the starter, got clocked. Got you. And here's Garrick. Garrick sends this one down the right field line. Barfield moving over. Looks like he's got room. He makes the catch, and this inning is over. So, MV, let me know. Do you want Hamilton for Trout in the field right now? Or wait until his at-bat comes up? I'll let MV uh, weigh in on this. Okay, wait, please. You got it. So, hey, reception must be good in West Virginia. There's only like a few second delay here today. So hopefully you got good weather over there. Thanks, Robbie. Um, so here's Juan Pierre. And he puts one on the ground. Valenzuela over to cover. Garrick makes a great play, gets it to Valenzuela, covering first. And we've got one out for Hick Carpenter. 0 for 3 on the day. Carpenter make it 0 for 4 with a strikeout. So it looks like Valenzuela came in a little cool and then has settled in. And Willie Wells looking for his first hit of the season. And he draws a walk, so he's on base. And here's the big hitting Buck Leonard. He's walked, struck out, and grounded out. And Leonard, opposite field, pass. Oh, Rosen might make a play. He bobbled it. It'll be an error on Rosen as he boots that ball, allowing Buck Leonard on. So we got two runners aboard, two out for Jesse Barfield. Maybe Robbie can wish a three-run homer in to be, because if we look at the card outcome card over here, it's showing a general 5.2% chance for a home run. I think Robbie would vote for that. So here's the pitch for Valenzuela. And this is a high ball. Drifting back, drifting back. O'Doul makes the catch. He stays in the back. Says Garcia may be tired, but we'll see. I'm not. Maybe he can eat up some more innings here because I'd hate to waste a pitcher for the next game today because we do have a doubleheader. So here's Joe Morgan. He's walked and singled twice. And he walks again. Joe Morgan today reached base all five times. I know that makes MV happy. What else would you want from a leadoff? Uh, uh, hit? Well, he's not a leadoff hitter. I'm about, why does MV have this guy down in the sixth hole? He should be leading the game off. 
I made a bad assumption there. So here we go, Jack Glasscock. Ooh, sends this one down into right field. Barfield's going to around it. Morgan might be coming in to third. He will. He's safe. And Garcia's tired. We've got no option. Let's get him out of there. All right. Um, da -da. I think I'm going to bring in McQuillan since he's not set to start for anything, and that'll leave face of innings for Robbie. So let's bring in McQuillan. Here is the pitch from McQuillan. We've got nobody out. Runner on third, Mike Trout. Did I just forget MV and not get Hamilton in there for you? I think I just did. Let me know, MV. I think I just jacked you up right there. Not that it's probably going to factor in this game, but I got a little ahead of myself. Here is Almeida, the catcher. McQuillan uh, throws the pitch. Almeida up the center field. Glasscock coming in. Here's a throw. They're going to try to get him, and he is safe. And we've got a 12-2 lead with that. Bad Bill Dolan coming in. The pitch from McQuillan, and he lines it to Young, who makes the catch. He got one away. And here's Al Rosen. Booted it last time, but he's hit that grand slam. So Al's forgiven today with that kind of bat. And here we go into left field, and here's the throw. And Almeida will take third. Hey, Arnold, welcome. Yes, I have. haven't forgot about it. I created 401 players, and they're still sitting there. <laughs> and we're getting to see some of them here on this project because, yes, we've all got so excited for this uh, draft league that now this is kind of the focal point. So I've got the 401. Uh, yeah, 99. No, MV, I thought I was supposed to do 1,000. I'm 99 short, right. So here's slamming Sammy Sosa. The pitch from McQuillan, and Sosa strikes out. So we've gone through eight, Manchester 12, Arlington 2, and we've still got El Toro, uh, Fernando Valenzuela on the man mound. Eating up some innings, we might call this approach. George Bell with the single. So he's aboard. So it's not over. This ninth inning rally, we've got the leadoff runner on with a bloop hit. And here's Francisco Lindor. And Valenzuela. Oh, Almeida's trying to get the signs right. Here's the pitch. Lindor sends this through to left field, and we've got two aboard. So let me know. Devlin at third in the field. Hey, I'm over here. Not paying attention to you. What else you want? You got any other defensive changes, MB? I'm pausing. MV gave me the, the pink hand. He's all good. So he's got the defense he wants out here. So here's Michael Young. And he hits this one out to left field. Looks like it's going to stay in. Oduo makes the catch. Bell will hold. And Sandy Alomar Jr. stepping up. This might be time to bring in a little better hitter see who we've got on the bench. Oh! Fifteen percent is not good for Alomar. What do we have over here? OPS versus left. Like this one right here. Robbie going to bring in a, a pinch hitter for you. The high probability to keep this game alive. Let's not say die yet. Here's the pitch from Valenzuela, and Fournier walks. And V's thinking, can this thing just end, please? And here's Juan Pierre, lefty on lefty. Got anybody better than a 23? Nah, he's pretty good. 
Ed Swartwood. Why not? Let's play the percentages. Oh, Jesse Burkett. Let's play the percentages and go, not go down without a fight here. So Valenzuela, the pitch. Burkett sends this one down the line. Looks like Oduo may get to it. He does. He makes the catch. Bell will tag. Score. That's their third run, and we now have two outs. And here is Hit Carpenter. Uh, let's just go with the higher percentage. Let's get Swartward in. A little bit 3% higher. Oh, making money. You know what? That, 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 maybe the future, Mrs. Wartburg, it will be happy to know that you're making some money. Ed Swartward steps in. We're down to the last out, and here's the pitch, and Swartward puts it on the ground. Joe Morgan should have an easy play. Takes the force at second, and this inning and game is over. So let's take a look at what we've got here. It was an explosion of the bats for the Red Bolts. Al Rosen knocked in four today. As you can see, he had a very strong uh, presence at the plate with that, with the, um, I should call it the, uh, Grand Slam, I think first one of the year. I'm not sure in that in Big Clue, if you remember in your game, you put up 15 runs if it was um, the only Grand Slam. But anyway, we'll figure that out. Pitching, well, we can see Zito. He got clocked. He walked six. That was his, the real issue right there and got him in the hole. Randy Johnson pitched a great game. Who would the MVP be? Let's take a look, and that goes to Randy Johnson. Even with all those runs, it's valuing that pitching performance right there. Yeah, playing Beatles is all a blur. You're like, it's just, all you know is it was a big win, right? So let me check out a couple... Um, Hold on one second. I have, let's see, one more to do. Recap right here. I think we got it. We got it. Let's go back out to our games played. Play schedule league game. Now we can see we got game one done. Now let's go get game two done. And here we go. Let's take a look at our lineups here. So for Arlington, the computer lineup it's going to give me is Roger Clemens. Uh, speak now or forever hold your peace. Um, we went Stratton, Zito, and now it's Clemens. So let me know if that's who you want in here, um, Robbie, or we can put it uh, Grove or Brown if you want. But I've got Clemens so far. Let me know if that will work. MV. Okay, let me go back to opponent. Don't know what you mean by untick. Okay, let's go computer lineup. We're going to get Robbie in here. Um, doo -doo -doo. 
Brown is going to be the pitcher. Yes, we know. Vita Blue, is that one right? MV, I think he's saying yes, it's lineup. Just occurred to me when Beatles updates his BBX, does he have to untick? Um, I don't know what that means. Yeah, we can check at the end of the game. Yeah, make sure I walk through and get those questions answered before we go. So here we go. Give me a thumbs up if you guys are ready to roll. Let's see, we have uh, Bassler catching here for the Red Bolts. Brown. Oh, yeah, Brown's in here. And away we go. Yes, we know uh, he is over the limit. So here we are back for the uh, evening game of this doubleheader. And we've got Juan Pierre leading off. Vita Blue on the mound based on that great 1971 Vita Blue year. And here's the first pitch. Pierre, they come in on the corners expecting bunt. Morgan ranges in and gets it in time and gets the speedy Pierre for the first out. So here's Hit Carpenter that we uh, got to see in action yesterday. No, Robbie, you got everybody keeps getting there. I got to defend Dave. Dave Coke doesn't need to work on AI. I would argue this. Dave Coke gives you so much flexibility to try to have the AI be what you want it to be that you have to put in the time to get the AI to behave as you would want because nobody knows what you want but you so you got to spend the time to tell it that's probably the best way to look at it because no AI can read minds it would be world's worst but this is what you got to do and again I think I don't think people understand this is let's go to Arlington is and let me show you what happens when you go to manager preferences, it's defaulted over here to called real life usage. So it's always going to make your order. You need to go change this yourself to player quality. It's set to real life usage because remember, a lot of times most people are trying to simulate who started the most. So when you go here to your uh, rotation, take a look at who it suggests. Guaranteed when we go by game started, it went Stratton, Zito, Clemens, Brown, Grove, because that's the order a game started. And that's why it does that, because it's set to real-life usage. So if we don't want to, since this isn't a real-life league, come over here, change it to player quality, and then let, it, let the AI reset your depth and lineups, and you might be surprised that you like it better. And here we go for Willie Wells. No hit on the year for Wells. It's the second game he's played. Here's the pitch. If I fill it in, it means the AI is not doing it. Well, world's worst. I'm going to argue the opposite side here. I'll get derailed like Beatles does in some of these. It isn't dumb because if you think about this, people are, are simulating for the most part seasons. So it is important. Why would you want to, somebody run a season and then come back and, and a guy that had the lowest ERA but only started four games in real life started 40? Then people would be going, this game's jacked up. Because it depends on what you want as the outcome. And only we know that. Um, the other thing I found, and I'm guilty of this too, is this game is so deep, but with that comes the responsibility of, hey, you got to dig into it if you want it to behave the right way. So there, there's so many options that action gives you. But you can't just hit play and expect it to produce the results you want right out of a box unless you tell it what you're trying to do or what you value. So, again, I hadn't even noticed that that was over here until I started going to figure out why my roster was jacked up. And then I realized the same thing's true on the uh, preferences, right? Like, if I want it, and I love this option, if I wanted to have different lineups, that's cool, but I need to make sure I don't have that set so it's advancing. Just keep that button off if you just want to go with those two. But Yeah, this button right over here, player quality, go for quality. Um, I ran my player quality, and it, of course, I had to set my lineups after that. It caused me a little bit of grief, but it changed everything.
And here we go. Back to Buck Leonard. Here's the pitch. And it's a walk. Buck Leonard draws. We got two on board, so maybe this will be a different feel of a game for Arlington. And Barfield steps in. Vita Blue with the pitch. Runners were moving with two out. Rosen gets it and gets the force at second. And that will end the inning. I'm in an argumentative mood today, World's Worst, so it's uh, been like that at work all day today, too. So I'm, I'm ready to ban. It seems like I have free time today to banter back and forth, but I, and I'm not a shill for action or anything, but a lot of times I, I, people are often disgusted or, or, or not liking a result and don't have all the facts behind uh, um, behind all that stuff. And, and it can be a pain in the ass, but it's like... I could sit back and argue at how this thing's going to manage, but any human manager makes decisions that are ridiculous to some of us. And if you want this thing to behave exactly as you want it, you got to tell it what to do. Otherwise, it's going to throw you a loop every once in a while. Even with a general AI uh, decision. Like infield in and that kind of stuff. Because sometimes when I'm playing, I see... I see some moves that I think, oh, I wouldn't have thought about that was a pretty good move by the A, and other times I'm going, I wouldn't do that. I think it's always going to happen. Here's Morgan. Reached base five times last time. And, um, yeah, nice. little music for Jack Glasscock. Here we go with the pitch. And he lines out to Lindor. And Lindor makes the uh, catch. So we've got Lou Gehrig, the Iron Horse, coming up. Let's take a look on the year. He's two for seven on the year. Here's the pitch to Gehrig. He grounds it back to three finger. He puts two of the three fingers on it, throws it over to first, and we are out of the inning. So after 1-0-0, zero, zero, got more of a pitcher's duel this game. So here's George Bell. Ooh, sends one out to left center field. Is it going to get back off the wall? O'Doul trying to make a play. He gets it into Rosen. Bell will be in with a double. So Francisco Lindor up to the plate. The pitch, and Lindor sends this out to O'Doul. He makes the catch. Ooh, Bell's tagging, and he will beat it as the throw goes to the cutoff man we've got the sc scoring opportunity here with a runner on third one out for Michael Young here's a pitch and wow hard grounder to short Bell went for home and uh, gets the out at first Bell scores and we've got a one to nothing Arlington takes the lead this game and here's a number nine hitter, the catcher, Alomar. And there's the throw over to Garrick. Ends the inning, but not without one run of damage. Arlington, zero. Manchester. Or Arlington, one. Manchester, zero. Let me get that right. Lefty O'Doul facing three-finger Brown. And here's one headed towards foul territory. I don't know if there's room. It's like pretty good uh, foul territory here to make a play. Buck Leonard's going to knock over somebody's nachos. Oh, and he doesn't. Almost got it, but he didn't get it. Here's the pitch. O'Doul sends this one up center through the infield for a base hit. And we've got O'Doul on Slam and Sammy, two for nine. And he puts it on the ground. Lindor with great range gets it, fires to first. His only play, we got one out. O'Doul takes second. Mike Trout at the plate. There's the pitch. Mike Trout sends this one out to center. Pierre drifting back. Will he make the catch? It's off the wall. 
little Scoro duel. Trout's going for third. Here's the throw. And he's in there safe with a triple. So we've got a tie ball game. Mike Trout coming through. And we've got bad Bill Dolan stepping up. Two for eight on the year. Dolan sends this out to left field. Bell tracking back. He's going way back. This one looks like it's off the wall. So we've got Dolan with a double. A triple, then a double. Drives in the run. Oh, now Manchester goes out to a 2-1 lead. And here's the catcher on the day, Johnny Bassler. Left-handed catcher. And he draws a walk. Here's the pitch. Rosen on the ground. Three finger makes the grab over to Leonard. And we've got two outs now. Runners at second and third. Yeah, that you might pull up some extra chairs in your office, uh, Robbie. Here's Joe Morgan. Ooh, looks like a slow pitch coming in there. Morgan goes out to opposite field. George Bell standing right there and makes the catch. And we've got another inning in the books. Two to one Manchester lead. Vita Blue on the mound looking to protect that lead and keep it right where it's at. So here is Juan Pierre. Sends a liner right out to Trout and center for the first out. Hit Carpenter. Take a look at his card. Yeah, 342 hitter, great range at third. Hit Carpenter. Two for five on the season. And Vita Blue gets the strikeout. So here's Willie Wells. He struck out his last time up. He's hitless so far in this young Shanks Bingo League. And Wells puts a bat on the ball out to Sammy Sosin right. He gloves it. And we are headed to the bottom of the third. A diamond in the rough find for uh, MV, Jack Glasscock is. Here's the ball out to, oh, a web gem play by Barfield out there. And gets that fly ball by Glasscock. Lou Gehrig grounded out his last time up. Here is the pitch. Out to center. Pierre makes the catch. And we got two down for Lefty O'Duel. He's uh, tearing it up so far. Singled his last time. He's four for eight on the young season. Here's the pitch. And he strikes out right as I was giving him all that praise. Down he goes. So, Buck Leonard up. Strong bat. He has been hitless so far. The pitch to Leonard. Leonard on the ground to Dolan. Dolan fires it. Is it in time? Ooh, Garrick looks like he's bobbling it. It's a high leap that goes over his head. So we got an E6 throwing error on bad Bill Dolan. And we've got uh, the lead runner on board for the Sharks. Here's Jesse Barfield. And we've got two aboard. So, Light of Blue's been pitching pretty good. But sure, MV will keep him on a short lease, especially if uh, this game is close or starts to get out of hand. Here's George Bell. And Bell strikes out. First out of the inning. Francisco Lindor. Blue delivers. Lindor on the ground to Dolan. Could this be two? Dolan makes... Oh! Looks like Dolan had trouble getting that one out of his glove. He fumbles it, and we've got an E6 that's loaded up the bases. That can't make manager MV happy with all that fielding work that they've put in in the offseason. So can't be happy about that. So here's Michael Young, second baseman, hometown favorite. And the pitch... Young sends this one out to center field. 
Mike Trout drifting back should be easy to get Leonard home. Leonard should trot home as he tags, and there's two away, and the game is now tied, and MV is not happy. He's officially weighed in. Here's Sandy Alomar, the number nine hitter. Looks like he pulls this one foul down the left field line. Light of blue. Two-strike pitch to Alomar. Alomar, another one, foul ball. Here's the pitch. Alomar grounds it. Gehrig picks up the ball, takes it to first, and he steps on the bag and gets the inning ending out. And we got a 2-2 ball game, folks. This is a tight one. Looks like it could be in for some drama throughout. So three-finger Brown facing Sammy Sosa. Sosa's two for ten. Grounded out his last time up. And he puts it on the ground again. Hit Carpenter with great range. Fires it to Leonard. And one away. Here's Mike Trout. He tripled his last time up. Scored O'Doul. Here's the pitch. And he's got one on the ground. Carpenter from third. Fires over. It's a long throw. And we've got a throwing error on Hit Carpenter. And Leonard can't come up with it. And Trout is on board with one away. Bad Bill Dolan. Oh, Trout's taken off for second. Here's the throw. Not in time. That's his first steal of the year. And now we've got another runner in scoring position. Maybe that makes MV a little happier. The pitch to Dolan. Dolan pops one up. Should stay in the infield. Looks like first baseman Buck Leonard is going to have this one. Infield fly rule in effect. He makes the catch. And here's Johnny Bassler, the left-handed hitting catcher. Brown pitches to Bassler. Bassler on the ground. Michael Young makes it, grabs it, throws it to Leonard, and the inning is over. So after four complete, it's a 2-2 ball game. Juan Pierre. He's 0 for 10 to start the season. I guess we could say he's due. Here's the pitch. Juan Pierre into right field, makes the turn, and he will hold there, and he's aboard with the leadoff single here in the fifth inning. So here's Hit Carpenter facing the lefty blue, and Pierre takes off. We got a hit and run going on. Carpenter into right. Pierre takes third easily, and we got runners at the corners. Nobody out. And I think MV is not happy again. So MV, I'll give you a moment here. Let me know. Do I need to do anything special? Going for the double play. You want infield in, anything like that. Just throw that pink hand in the air or sit on it if you have nothing to say. Yeah, Blue's... Uh, Still got some gas. Let it play out. I got you. Here we go. Willie Wells steps in, and he draws the walk. So now we got a base loaded situation here. Buck Leonard at the plate, and things are feeling a little tense for the visiting team. Here's the pitch from Blue. Leonard on the ground. Dolan grabs it, makes a great play over to Morgan. They've only got time to get the lead runner. we got runners on the corners now. One run in, and it's a 3-2 to two Arlington lead. Let me know if you still trust Blue. I'll start going a little slower here, MV, so you can give you a chance to throw the flag. Uh, I'm under the marching orders of let it play out, so that's what I'm going to do. But I'll uh, keep my eye out for the uh, pink hand. Here is Vita Blue. Needs a double play. Uh, inning ending double play right here would be something good. Sticking with Vida. Here's the pitch. Barfield sends this one out to left field. This is probably deep enough to get Carpenter home from third. O'Doul with the catch. And no throw home. We've got a 4-2 to two game, and here comes George Bell. Let's take a look at George Bell, that 1987 season he's based off of.
148 OPS. So here's the pitch from Blue. And sends it out to center. Trout drifting back, and he'll make the catch. Inning is over, but not before some damage was done. 4-2, to two, Arlington. Here's Al Rosen. Lines one into left field. Lindor throwing it off. What's going on? Oh, they've got Rosen in a rundown. What the heck's going on there? Fires it back. Rosen's hung up between first and second, and he goes for second and is in safe. They couldn't they could him, uh, couldn't pick him off with a game of pickle there. And Rosen, no doubt, scaring manager MV as to what the heck he was doing out there. He's in the second safe, so all is good. Here's Joe Morgan. He's flown out twice. Here's the pitch to Morgan. Morgan, three-finger brown, makes the play over, gets Morgan. Rosen's going to hold it second, and we got one down. To Jack Glasscock steps in. The pitch, Glasscock sends this one into right field. Barfield coming over. Rosen will not test Barfield's 10-rated arm, and we've got runners on the corners. And the iron horse, Lou Gehrig himself, steps to the plate. Pitch from Brown. Gehrig sends this one into center field for a single. That'll bring one run home. Glasscock hustles down to third, and we've got a 4-3 to three ball game. Throwing over to Garrick. Don't want him to scam his way into second base. Here's the pitch to O'Doul. Uh-oh, we've got a rain delay. And interestingly enough, because I hit let the computer uh, pick the play, we've been put into a rain delay, and now Roy Face is in. As the pitcher for Three Finger Brown. Here's the pitch to O'Doul. O'Doul sends this one out to right field. Hugging the line is Barfield. And he steps over and he makes the play. And that will get Glasscock home. And we now have a 4-4 to -four game with two out here in the fifth inning. And Garrig on the move with two out. Sosa pops this one up. Should be the uh, third out of the inning. See how this rain delay affects the other side with blue, but we've got Carpenter makes the catch, and we got a 4-4 to -four game here, and it looks like um, they threw Horlin in for you there, uh, MV. And what I think happened is when I hit the... Because I'm, I'm just letting the computer decide the strategy. When the rain delay hit right after I did that, it was in the computer versus computer, so it, it did the check, and... Um, yeah, I think we are able to get games run. You know what? That's a good point. I'm going to take a look. Yeah, I've got it checked. We could have rainouts. <laughs> so uh, here we go with Joe Horland. This is a tight ball game, so... Lindor steps in, and Horland strikes him out. One away to Michael Young. Michael Young on the ground to Bad Bill. Bad Bill up with the throw over to Garrick and gets him for out two. And here is the catcher batting ninth, Sandy Alomar Jr. He puts it on the ground. Bill Dolan with great range fires it, makes the play, and we got a 1-2-3 inning. And as we go to the bottom of the six, Mike Trout will lead things off. For I think today I've been mistakenly referring to Robbie as the home team. I'm just realizing, heck, we're in Manchester. Or West Virginia or someplace in between. Mike Trout steps in. Roy Face 
in, delivers. Ball's hit hard out to left field. George Bell back. He makes the catch for the out, and that brings Bad Bill Dolan up, who's popped out, and he had a double in the second. That's a good point, Robbie. Do you... Uh, um, but I'm wondering... The only thing that would be troublesome, Robbie, is if we've got it on pitch-by-pitch pitch mode and waiting... Um, yeah, maybe I could... I think... But I've got them on human-human. My only thing is to try to have somebody come in here and say, well, the pitcher is going to pitch. Like, like if we had pitch, we go to pitch right here. Yeah, there's no perfect way to do it because then if somebody wanted to do something and the pitcher wanted to pitch out, then the other person knows what it's going. So it's hard for it to be complete human, human. But I know what you're saying to allow for a little bit more human input. But. Because if I just do pitch, that doesn't give the computer the chance to do a pitch around or do a pickoff move or something like that. So there could be a time where that's not going to be the best. And here's Bill Dolan. Sends a fly ball out to George Bell. And we got two away for Johnny Bassler. Bassler facing the face, draws a walk. And here's Al Rosen. Problem is, Robbie, if we just do click pitch, it it doesn't it doesn't give the computer the option to do other things. That means we'd have to be doing everything for like in this situation, if I hit pitch. I'm telling it to pitch. If I hit computer, it gives them the chance to actually throw over. Yeah, I, I get that world's worst, but the bad thing is like in this situation right here, what do we do? So who's pitching? Robbie's pitching. So does Robbie say, okay, pitch out? Well, then MV knows... He's not going to steal. That's what we have to avoid. To me, that's the bigger calamity right here to avoid then. And the real idea is the only way to truly have it where two people are truly managing is when they're playing head-to-head -head and they can only see on their end what they need to see with the right timing. So here we go. Pitch to Rosen. Rosen sends this one to left field. Carpenter makes the play. So you guys tell me, how have you approached this in the McGreevy League where you have two managers here and you've got a base running situation like that? Does the first person say, I want you to pitch out, and then the other person says, well, I'm not going to steal now? I mean, I, I don't know how. I'm open to anything, but I don't know how that would have worked in the Brevi. It seems to me like if you've got one human manager, you could only really have one human manager with game decisions or it won't work. Making lineup changes is different, but there, to me there's no way it would be fair for two people to be making like strategy decisions with base runners and that kind of stuff. Got Devlin in. Yeah, so there you go. So if we do the same thing, then home manager has the advantage and the visitor, it's just straight computer, computer, computer. Yeah, okay, good. No, that's good to know because in my brain I'm thinking, yeah, we can't. There's just, you'd have to be, this game's great if you want to play head-to-head -head offline where you're it's true head-to-head -head and you can't see each other. But, yeah, that wouldn't make sense to have both people being full-blown manager Managing strategy throughout because it, it defeats itself. But if I see you pitch out, well, then maybe I'm not going to steal. I, sh I shouldn't know you're going to pitch out. So, And away manager could sub only. Oh, interesting. 
Give me cards and dice any day of the week. Hey, Clinton Knights, that's why I say to each their own. I used to love that, but I, I, I couldn't see myself. The other day I saw somebody, who are they using the actual digital dice thing? I thought, how cool is that? Why would I even want, want to be touching the dice when that was pretty cool that you can go to like a simulator to roll the dice. But I think Beatles this time wanted it first manager in would get the strategy call. So I don't, I don't know where that came from. I've never heard that at all for this league. Anyway, here we go with Juan Pierre stepping in. And the pitch on the ground. And Eric gets it, throws it to Corlin, and he is in time. So he's still got a four to four game. Hit Carpenter. Steps in. What do you have here? He lined out, struck out. He got a single his last time up. And here's the pitch to Carpenter. Carpenter. This looks like a well-hit ball. Oduel going back, and I think he's just got to watch it hit the stands because hit Carpenter from his dead ball era has just come through and broke the tie for Arlington and put them up 5-4. to four. Willie Wells now steps in. And boom, Willie Wells on the ground, and Wells is over to first. And we're getting some boos here from uh, the Manchester crowd. So first in the chat, what does it mean first in? First to show up? Why is MV yelling Devlin for Rosen? Devlin's been in, MV. If you look at, th I put him in uh, at the start of the inning. Yeah, I don't know what first in means. Oh, cool. You're up tape, Bindi. Yeah, I didn't think we had too much of a lag. But, yeah, I got it. As soon as I saw it, I put him in when the inning started. Yeah, first to appear. So the first person that types their name in chat that they can, can call the plays. So does that just make it competitive so everybody's trying to be the first in or something? It just seems like an odd, an odd approach. All right, well, you're first in, Robbie, so hey, wh whatever, MB. you got to take a back seat to your home your home team, I guess. If that's the rule we're going with, uh, then Robbie can uh, uh, call his play. So MV's straight computer. Yeah, I, I agree. We're, we're, it's, it's, hey, I'm, I'm open to whatever because I'm not going to be uh, managing my team um, other than maybe trying to do a couple little things, I think, last night. Um, but, hey, are we good? Yeah, you can be a C, and I don't mind either. So, um, ah, That's a good point, Big Clue, because you don't know who's going to be there. So, hey, I'm open to anything as we get through this. Um it might, hey, this might get so complicated. I'm just gonna I'm gonna look for games where I know people aren't gonna show up just so I can get through the game. That's gonna be my tendency, probably. Yeah, he can still do substitution substitutions. I'll be pulling everybody. Hey, who can't show up tonight? Those are the games I'm gonna do. Um, here's Buck Leonard up to the plate. Let's see what he's done. He's walked, grounded out, grounded to short, one away. Willie Wells on first. Got a nice close game going here. Here's Joe Horland's pitch. And heads to center field, and Mike Trout makes the catch. So, I guess the way is we're just going to make you computer. 
And then now I can hit pitch and Robbie gets to call. Um, yeah, MV, you're laughing at me. You're thinking, hmm, maybe I can do the same thing. Uh, yeah, I agree, Clinton. I think it's how, I mean, we're here, so if somebody wants to kind of throw their flavor into this or whatever, I'm willing to do some of this. But I, I don't know if we've had any established league protocol. You know, I was watching my game last night, and I couldn't figure out why my I had Ivy Wingo in there, so I was trying to get Dick Allen into pinch hit, and I didn't know that. I was definitely not the first in the chat, so I guess substitutions would be okay if I understand it, but not the game strategy. So I think I'm getting my head wrapped around this. So in this case, um, Robbie would have the point right here to tell me, hey, Steve, do a bunt or something like that. And since he has it, I'm just going to use hit because he's trying to score some runs. And here we go. Yeah, I'm the same way, Clue. We got a catch here. O'Duel makes that catch, and the inning is over. Ooh, a little seventh inning stretch. Listen to a little music. Long version. Okay, well, that's enough. Heard enough. Here's the pitch. Joe Morgan over to Hick Carpenter. Carpenter up throws. Is Morgan going to beat it? He does with his speed, and he's on board for jo Jack Glasscock. Let's get his first name. So for Robbie, oh, yeah, there you go, MV. And here's the pitch. Taken off is Morgan. And while he was moving, this is a long fly ball. Barfield way back. Morgan has to retreat, and he'll stay at first. We got one away here in the bottom of the seventh for Lou Gehrig. And strikeout for Lou Gehrig. And here's lefty O'Duel, two down. Oh, he did get a sacrifice fly his last time up, but he's 0 for 3 on the day. Pitch from Roy Face. Out of play. Foul ball. Here's the pitch to O'Duel, and O'Duel sends this one high into the infield. Carpenter should have an easy play. And he makes the catch. So here's George Bell. Steps up. Top of the eighth inning. Corlin still in. Yeah, I got a mix in there, uh, Clinton. I've got some trying to get the, as George Bell grounds out for the first shot, trying to get some music and make it interesting. I was going to dig around last night and then today and do some stuff. And then was even going to try to record some of that walk-up music, but... When I get more time, I'm going to get some more assortment of uh, walk-up to play with. Here's Francisco Lindor, 0 for 3 on the day, 2 for 11 on the young season. Oh, down the line. He hits this one hard. Sosa's ranging over, gets it right near the foul pole, and we've got two away. And here's Michael Young, 0 for 6 on the season, 0 for 3 today. And here we go. Strikes out. So Roy Face is looking good. Let me know, Robbie, if you uh, want me to keep an eye on him or you got any other ideas. Um, my thought might be, hey, if he lets a runner on, maybe we go uh, bring in another reliever because I know you've got some true, other true relievers to help hold this game. Here's the pitch from Face. Salmon, slamming Sammy Sosa strikes out. So, hey, Face is doing good. I think he can pitch. Yeah, he's getting close. Maybe another batter, and we might need to uh, uh, 
Mike Trout, he pops up. Lindor under it. And there's the out. So we got two away. Bill Dolan. Bad Bill in. And Dolan sends this one out to deep left. Bell, racing back, makes the catch. Guess what, Robbie? We'll get another one in because I think he's at its pitch limit. And he got you through that inning. So here we go. Eight complete in the books. And we're headed to the top of the ninth inning. Robbie's reliever is the face. Oh, big clues coming in with some great stuff there. Sandy Alomar Jr. on a ground ball to Dolan. Dolan makes the play over to Garrick for the out. Up steps Juan Pierre, one for 12 this season. And sends this one into the wall, and Pierre going for second. Is he in in time? He is with the double, and we got another run opportunity presenting itself to the man. I'm looking up the Arlington Sharks. Got to get that down. So I guess big clue would be waving the pink hand. Uh, if he wanted to change. Give it a second here and see if that's the case, or he's good to let Horland continue. Oh, World's Worst, he does have. He's got other relievers. I remember seeing. Haven't heard from MV, so... Uh, Portland still looks good. He can go. He could go a lot more pitches. So here's the Carpenter sends this one into left field. O'Doul gets it. Will Pierre go for home? He will. No throw. And Carpenter, his fourth hit of the day, and we have a six to four lead. All is good, MV says. Okay. How about now, MV? MV might be like, I don't want to waste my bullpen. Who knows who's in his I don't think MV really has much of a bullpen. Actually, he's got uh, a lot of starting pitchers he's using, like Valenzuela. So he says he's all good. And Wells sends this one out into right field, and Carpenter is going to take third. Wells has a double. And we've got two aboard, one out. Buck Leonard coming up as Arlington looks like they've padded their lead a little. So um, World's Worst declaring game over. MV's already worried about pinch hitting. I'm going to stop right here and say, you good with Horland, MV? Just double checking. Pettis for Almeida, good. Okay, I'll worry about the pinch hitting when we get there. So here's Buck Leonard. And Leonard steps in, and they won't pitch to Leonard. All good with Joe, perfect. So here's Jesse Barfield after Leonard draws the walk, grounds it to Devlin, Devlin up over to Morgan. Morgan's going to make the throw, and an inning-ending double play. Horlin... Uh, comes through so we got a two run lead Robbie let's take a look at uh, who you've got on the bench and you've got Dan Quisenberry as a true reliever or Juan Acevedo let me know who you'd like uh, Robbie Quiz or Juan Acevedo Quiz is coming in. We got Quisenberry, so we are going to have MV is looking for Pettis for Almeida. Almeida's not in the game, MV. I hope he's not on, an, on the previous broadcast right now. You have Bassler as your catcher right now. So do you want Bassler in or do you want Pettis for Bassler? I'm going to pause a moment, but make sure we know what pinch hit options you want.
Pettis for Bassler. Here it is. Bill Pettis is in the game. So here we go. Quiz hoping to keep that two-run lead. And here's the pitch. And Pettis sends this one out to left field. And that one is deep, and we've cut it to one. What a brilliant move by MV. Almost like he paid Quiz off before the game to throw a smooth ball his way. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, my. Yes, we have a game. I think World's Worst said the game was over. Look out. We got Art Devlin up. Facing Quiz. And we've got the red or the pink hand. What do you like, MV? If you want a pinch hitter, let me know. I think that may be what it is, so let's look at the options. Devlin's 18%. MV, you do. You have two left-handers that are 30-plus percent, Chick Stahl and Hamilton. Yeah, Robbie, uh, get me Josh. You got it. There you go. Little tense here. Here's the pitch. Hamilton sends this one out to center field. Juan Pierre drifting back, and he makes the catch. So we've got the first out. Two more to go, Robbie. And I'm guessing we're not pinch hitting for Joe Morgan. Here's the pitch to Morgan. Morgan lines it. Out to right field, Barfield makes the catch. And Manchester, as it says, is down to its last out. So I'm going to pull this up in case you want to go with, uh, you do have a lefty MV that is a 32% chance stall. Or you stick with Glasscock, who's a 24. So I'm going to pause and let you, I'm going to double check and you can tell me that it's all good again. Or... Let Pebbly Jack bat. And we will do that. Here's the pitch from Quisenberry. And Glasscock, look at MV. Never given up. He had a gut intuition. The numbers weren't in his favor. But Glasscock is aboard, representing the tying run. And here comes the iron horse, Lou Gehrig. And here's the pitch from Quisenberry. MV is waving his hand. What do you got, MV? We're all on pins and needles. Let Lou bat for the walk-off. Well, you bet. So let's see. Here's the pitch. And Garrick steps in, and he drives a single. This game is not over. Glasscock on the move. We'll take third. We have the tying run at third base now with one out left and lefty O'Doul at the play. Robbie is waving his hand. What do you got for me, Robbie? Everybody's waving a hand. Everybody wants to make some kind of change. I'm waiting on pins and needles here. I'll give you guys the time. No doubles outfield for Robbie Wartberg. Thank you. I'm on OFND. No doubles outfield it is. MV, waiting to hear if you need some kind of substitution. Or is MV just waving? Maybe he's alone. Let us know, MV, what you got going on. I doubt... Uh, let lefty play. What the heck? I'm tired. Well, yeah, but I don't look. Let's take a look at your bench. You have nobody. Um, 
Lefty's 38% chance to get a hit. Stahl would be the next closest. There's nobody on your bench that's a better chance to get a hit in this situation. The right guy is at the plate. Hope that makes you feel better. Robbie, we've got outfield at no doubles over here. So here's the pitch. O'Doul sends a shot into right field, and that'll bring the tying run in. And we got a tie ball game, folks. This one is not over. Sammy Sosa up. So I'm going to pause here and see if Robbie's still good with Quisenberry. Um, we do have another option. I mean, he's not tired, but we do have uh, Juan Acevedo, who's another kind of call it a real true relief pitcher option so uh, let me know what you want MV's waving his hand again what's going on MV <laughs> we'll give you some time to sort it out just wait a second here for the delay See how things are going. See what we got. MV quiz is done. Got popcorn ready. MV still waving. We don't know what he's waving about. Um, let's go. Juan Acevedo is your other reliever. Let's bring Acevedo in. He looks more determined just in his picture. We're going to wait for MV was waving something. I don't know if he wants to pinch hit for Sosa. What he's thinking, so I'm going to give it just a second here. I thought MV might be weighing in on something. If he is, let Sammy play. Yes, righty. Let's go. Let Sammy play. Here's the pitch. Sosa steps in, sends this one out to left field. Bell drifting back, and guess what, folks? He makes the out, and we're going to extra innings. We've had a few of those this year. Here is a third base slot and a catcher slot we need. So MV needs to let me know who would like to catch. I'm guessing, is it going to be Pettis or Almeida? And then we'll need a decision at uh, third base as well, where the options are probably Dolan moving, moving over or Almeida. Is it possible to slub, sub Glasscock from DH? too short. If we do that, you will lose the DH and your pitcher will have to bat. So if you want to do that, yes. Okay, so let's go to your roster and we are going to Glasscock is going to play short. Possible double shoot. Yeah, Glasscock is going to go to sh um, short. And who is the player that we're going to double click and to be removed and replaced with the pitcher?
Um, who are we going to replace, Pettis or Hamilton? Oh, no, it can be done, but... Yeah, I'm not sure why you'd want to pull your DH out here. I just... Okay. Uh, here's, what, here's what you want. So we're going to want... You're going to want Almeida. at third right and we're going to want Pettis at catcher now you're good now you got your you got the people that can play those positions right there. So here we go. And here is Horlin still on the mound, pitching to George Bell, and Bell strikes out. Horlin's got fifty eight pitches, he can go about seventy. Lindor sends this one out into right field, and we've got the go-ahead run at first for Robbie Wartburg and the Sharks. Michael Young stepping up to the plate now. On the ground, Horland throws to first, and it's going to be a double play, and Horland is able to get out of that inning quickly and we go to the bottom of the 10th where Manchester has a tie, uh, I guess opportunity to break the tie. So here we go. Throw the hand up uh, MB if you need anything but uh, your center fielder Mike Trout coming to the plate and leads off with a single. And here's bad Bill Dolan steps in the pitch. Dolan sends a fly ball to Barfield and right. Barfield drifting back, and he will make the catch. Trout won't tag. He stays at first, one away. And here's Bill Pettis, who's playing catcher now, the left-handed hitter. Pitch to Pettis. Pettis is on the ground. This could be two. Young gets it, makes a great play. Not going to be in time, though, to get Pettis at first, so he's safe on the fielder's choice, and we've got two down for Rafael Almeida. Here's the pitch, and that one gets by Alomar. It's going to be scored a wild pitch by Acevedo, and now we have the winning run at second base. Almeida up the bat. Here's the pitch. Almeida on the ground. Lindor gets it, fires over, and we're out of the inning, and we're going to go to the 11th. And we have Sandy Alomar Jr. I wonder what options we've got here, Robbie. How about we... Who else can catch for you? Who else do we have as a catcher? And these all good. Now let's keep Alomar in. Maybe. Look at your roster. Who do we have that can catch? Uh, swore, oh, yeah. <laughs> They're not really good catchers, so I think I'm just going to keep uh, Alomar where he's at here. So here's Horland. MB says he's all good with Horland. Alomar strikes out. Here comes Juan Pierre. He's singled and doubled today. Here's the pitch, and Pierre walks. So Juan Pierre, and uh, Horland is now showing red. So MV, tell I'm going to pause. Tell me what you want to do. And remember, Robbie, 
you can make a decision if you want me to steal, hit and run, or do something like that. So think about that while MV's waiting. We're waiting for MV to respond on the pitching change. Get me Hanky, the Terminator. Hanky, the Terminator, is in. Uh, his hold rating is not that great. Pierre's an 83% chance. Robbie's waved his hand. I'm stopping for you, Robbie. Tell me what you want. You want to steal with Pierre? You want to pinch hit Carpenter? Although Carpenter is uh, done really well. He's 29%, and if we pull at your lefties, yeah, he's still a good option to keep out there. Briquette's right about the same 30% chance of a hit. Oh, hit and run. Got you, Robbie. So here we go on the hit and run. He's taken off, and he, oh, what a call by Robbie Wartburg. A successful hit and run, and Carpenter has gone five for five today. As he comes through in the clutch again with one away, Willie Wells stepping up, and we've got the go-ahead run at third. Infield is in based on the manager tendency. So here is the pitch. And Wells on the ground, infield in. Robbie, do you want do you want to try to get that run? It's a 42% chance since the infield's in. Do we go for the go-ahead run? Or do you say no? It's up to you. 42% chance that the run scores. World's Worst says you don't have a you-know-what. Robbie says no, Robbie. Conservative is all get out, says no. And we get the second out, giving one more chance to Buck Leonard. Here is the pitch from Hanky And Leonard up to the plate, strikes out, thus ending a chance. And we'll never know what would have happened. Acevedo still on the mound. Let's see what he can do. Oh, he can go pretty deep. He's got a lot of uh, stamina in a relief. Here's Morgan. Leonard makes the play, but Morgan is out. Jack Glasscock up. Acevedo with the pitch. Let's see if Acevedo can really uh, hold his own here and eat up some innings. Bell makes the catch. So we got two away to Garrick, who has... Uh, he singled his last time. Here's the pitch, and he strikes out. So here's Jesse Barfield coming in. Hanky the Terminator can go. He can go only about 25 pitcher. He's just a closer in the uh, modern day sense for sure. Jesse Barfield walks. Got Barfield on first. George Bell stepping up. Can we call it a tie? No, Robbie, we can't. Somebody's got to win this thing. And here we go. Bell with the center going out to Trout. Trout makes the catch, and Barfield holds it first. We've got uh, one away. Here's Francisco Lindor. Robbie, what do you want? I see the hand going up. Hit and run. Here we go. Robbie make another call. Lindor puts it on the ground, makes the out, but it will get that runner to scoring position. What just happened there? Uh, he knocks it down, steps on one for first, the throw to second, he was still safe. So good job. Robbie gets Barfield into scoring position. We've got Michael Young, the second baseman. That's just for grins and giggles. He's 16% nine. Let's see what options you have to pinch hit. You got some great left-handed pinch hitters. Um, available to you, Robbie. I'm just saying. Michael Young's an eight, a 16.9% chance to get a hit. You've got uh, Billy Goodman, Jesse Burkett, and Fournier that are all over 20%. Yeah, Jesse Burkett is the best pinch hit option you got, a 409 hitter. Uh, 
probably the best to come in and, and uh, go against him. It's Jesse Burkett, Robbie. In fact, I'm going to put him in. You can see right here, he's got a 24.9 up against Hanky, who, and that's better than the 16 that Young has and better than the 22 for Goodman. Um, here comes Jesse Burkett bringing your best guy off the bench to try to get that go-ahead run. MV sitting back going, thanks for all the help, gentlemen. And here we go with the pitch from the Terminator. And Burkett draws the walk. Now, MV, I'm going to stop for a moment because Hanky has gone past his limit. He's showing red tires. Based on pitch count, let me know what you want to do. The computer didn't pitch to Burkett. They walked him. And now we have Alomar Jr. stepping up, who is a horrible hitter. Let's see what uh, Coach MV does if he lets Henke continue. All good. Robbie, here's what we have. Uh, let's take a look. Alomar, we can go to one of those lefties. Uh, pinch hit. We could, uh, your next best one here is going to be Billy Goodman. Or Ed Swartwood are the highest hit probabilities um, against Hanky. So tell me if you want. Uh, you got Jack Fournier too, but Billy Goodman or Ed Swartwood. Billy Goodman it is, trying to get that run home. Here we go. MV says he's all good. Here's the pitch. Oh, Bill Pettis wants to talk to Hanky. Hanky with the pitch. Goodman puts this one on the ground. Joe Morgan's trying to make a play. Comes in with great range and will retire the side. And here we go into the bottom of 12. Robbie, we got to get a catcher. I'm going to say, do we put Camp Anson in or Swartwood? Neither one are worth a, is a catcher, but hey, you got to have one. So Swartwood or Anson as your catcher. Anson it is. And there we go. Second base. Uh, I'm just going to make Billy Goodman your best one, so we'll keep Goodman in. Lefty O'Doul steps in. Here's the pitch from Acevedo. O'Doul sends this one. Leonard makes the catch. I thought this was going into right field, and we've got the first out. So here's Sammy Sosa. Sosa, base hit into the left, and we've got a runner aboard for MV. So MV, if you want any, uh, let's see what you got. I don't know if you've got any good options. Yeah, you've got Chick Stahl on the bench. Um, probably your best uh, left-handed bat for a hit chance, so let me know if you want anything. I'm going to let Trout hit away unless you throw a red hand up here. And red hand, MV, what would you like? Hey, Chris, glad to see you and Aaron showed up. This has turned into a doubleheader marathon. Chick Stahl. Is up the bat, and here we go. The pitch from Acevedo. And Chick Stahl sends this one into center for a single, and Sosa coming around second and won't make the turn to third. Hold safe first and second. Add Bill Dolan to the plate. Here's the pitch from Acevedo, and Dolan strikes out. So we have two down, 
for the left-hand hitting Bill Pettis. Here's the pitch from Acevedo. I don't think there's any decent options for you, MV. Yeah, leave bad Bill. Yep, just got some righties, and they're not as good of a chance as uh, Bill Pettis. Here is the pitch. And Pettis strikes out. So here we go to, well, we need a defensive replacement here. So I'll let you look. Almeida, you don't want to pull from third, but you've got uh, Selbach. I guess Stahl could play center. He's a one. Or Goldsmith. Let me know who you want to shove into center field. I'll get you Hacker MV, but as soon as we get uh, Stahl at center field, he's there. Uh, Hacker coming in, and we're good. Uh, Robbie says, thank God. Yes, so here we go. MV's all set up. Juan Pierre sends this one out to center field. Stahl, not great range in center. He's going to make the catch, though, with that one rating. Here's Warren Hacker. Get Carpenter, who's 5 for 5 on the day, looking for his sixth hit. And it won't happen as Sosa makes the out. Here's Willie Wells. Wells draws the walk. So what will happen here? Wells on. Robbie, don't know if you want to do anything special. Runner will be moving with two out, so... Buck Leonard up. Oh, he's got pretty good numbers here against Hacker. And, ooh, Hacker throwing over. And what just happened? Garrick throws to Dahl and tags Wells for the out. I guess they got Wells leaning off the base. And that will end the inning. And here comes the bottom of the 13th inning. And the Manchester Red Bulls. Almeida leads off for a single. And here comes little Joe Morgan. The pitch from Acevedo. Almeida's moving. Here's the throw. And not in time, so Manchester... All right, MV, hands up. Let us know what you want to do. Almeida is <laughs> on second. I don't know what MV could be doing except replacing somebody, and I don't know who he wants. My assumption would be he wants. I doubt he's going to pinch hit for Joe Morgan. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm right here saying Montreville is a seven run and Almeida is a seven run. So I don't think you're going to get any advantage. So here we go to Joe Morgan. Here's the pitch. Morgan draws a walk. Uh, Robbie, just looking if we have any options here. Eh. I don't see anybody here that's got that. Right now, Acevedo has the best, has the lowest hit percentage, even with people on the bench. So I think we're better off sticking with him. And here's the pitch. Glasscock puts it on the ground. Lindor over, gets it over to first. Oh, just in time, and we've got the first out of the inning. Lou Gehrig stepping up. And Robbie, I might suggest uh, we walk Gehrig to at least set up uh, the force at home, the double play, bring the infield in. What do you think? What do you want, Robbie? Yep, 
I got you. You got it. You got to get the out. So one run will lose it. So we're going to walk. Intentional walk. And then infield the corners. I like your thinking. And that's all we can do. Now we hope for the best. Red Bulls. Red Bulls playing Jersey City and Arlington at the same time. And Detroit. So here we go. Here comes uh, Cap Anson out to uh, make sure things are good. And oh, duel on the ground. Infield was in at the corners. We're going to have to throw to try to get the outer. We lose. So we're throwing yes. And the run gets in, and that will end it in the 13th inning as Manchester wins this tight one, 7-6. to six. Did I just screw up the double play chance by trying to throw home? Let me see. What do you guys think? Did I jack that one up? MV saying it's a great game. Hold on. Did I just assume throwing home to try to get the run was the only way to do it? And if I say no, they, they turn the double? Short. So, let me see. I think I just screwed you, Robbie. Yeah, because there's no previous play. Yep, game unavailable. Hmm. Yeah, you got me. Yeah, I, I and I thought in the moment, Robbie, that's my decision. I thought in the moment, oh, yeah, we've got our only option going home, and that's not true because we still had a chance. If I say no, then they would at least have started the potential for a double play. So my apologies on that. And... Let me see. Yeah, because I thought, could I go back to the previous play, but it's not letting me do that in a non-exhibition game. Um, the MV is trying to make everybody feel go. The double play was not going to work. It was a well-earned win. Yeah, right. I'm seeing that. So let's go back. Oh, yeah, it doesn't exist. It's trying to have me pick up a game that doesn't exist. So let me go back and fire that up, and let's take a look at the box. Yeah, it was not, it was a nine percent to get to the chant. It, there was no percentage on the double play. The nine was for the throw home. That, yeah, there is no double play chance. What it was is to get the runner out at the plate. You don't get to see what the double play chance is. It, it's either you say yes, I want to throw home. We got a nine because it, it was a nine percent chance to get an out, or you let it go and let them turn. It never shows you the double play percentage so let's look at uh 
Uh, world's worst. I'm. I don't. I don't know what you're looking at because I believe it says throw home. The option was to throw home. Not. I wasn't given an option to start the double play. It's the option was whether I wanted to try to get him out at home, and that was the 9%. That's a good one. Hey, I'll have to go rewind this for my own curiosity now because I can swear that any time I've ever played this game and been met with a throw home, it's telling me that the um, out percentage. Now, if there's somewhere in a little print somewhere on the screen I've never seen that's telling me what the double play percentage is, I don't know. I've never seen that ever. Um, I've only seen, do you want to throw home? And then you're faced with the percentage of that success. Um, and then if you say no, there's an assumption it's going to try to get the double play. But I, I don't think I've ever noticed being offered up the chance at continuing a double play and seeing a double play percentage listed. That To me, that was the out percentage at the plate. Very true, Robbie. And another reason why, um, as I get used to the uh, Beatles way of doing things, I may be looking at um, having to pay closer attention to that for sure. Um, let me let's go back here and take a look at. Um, I've never seen any double play percentage ever happen ever. I mean, I, I've not played this game forever. I've never seen it say, "Do you want to start the double play?" And here's your percentage. I've only seen, do you want to try to throw and get this runner out? And this is your percentage. So let's take a look at the game itself. And let's go to the box for game two here. Let's go take a look at this box. Play by play. Let's see what we see. Um, grounded to short, Almeida scored. And because he came and tried to fire here. Do we have film? There we go. Here's the film. Never really looked at game film. I don't even know what I'm looking at here. Yeah, exactly. If you don't choose to throw home, it defaults for trying to do the double play. Correct. But I've never seen, I've never seen uh, uh, the double play percentage shown. And if it's on there, I'm going to have to go look because I'm only looking at the out percentage. I, if the double play is also on that card, then I've never even looked deep enough. So. But I think the key here, I've learned many things here. So I'm going to have to get right with this, meaning um, I'm going to have to go because we spent so much time on this game. Uh, it's turned into um, a longer um, thing. So I've got to get back to some other things I was going to do because I was going to spend time and do a bunch of exporting BBX files. And so hopefully I covered that on the front. But here's what it's making me realize. Um, I don't know if I want to get into this degree like Beatles ran the Ned McGreevy. I, I, I don't know if I've got the patience or time for it. So I'm going to need, if I'm doing that, and I've got the human man, the, the computer one figured out, that can help. And then the human one, I'm going to have to train myself to stop in the middle of this just so I give them the options. Because my goal wasn't to, to uh, shut you down there, Robbie, uh, and get that. But um, I don't want that to happen where I'm causing that again. Um, so. 
I don't know. Maybe I'm not the right guy to do uh, games where people are doing live. I think I'm the guy that needs to be doing them when nobody's team's here. That's the ones I think I'm going to seek out because I don't want to jack somebody's game up. And um, yeah, I think, you know what I want? I want what Robbie said. I'm going to see, has anybody figured this out? Have, um, I'm going to see, um, I'd like to go to where we can have, um, like Robbie said with baseball for windows where you're in true spectator mode, right? Um, I don't know if there's a way to slow down the play by play. I've never tried to do that. where at with uh, action except just by hitting the computer computer and kind of doing it that way to be able to watch it, you know, in baseball for windows, you just sit back and go into full it's paced out so you can be a full spectator. Yeah. Yeah, so we can watch Envy. That's what I'm saying, because otherwise, if this is going to be into like a human controlled human where I'm just like the surrogate or the host for it, it's like it, it just match up each other online using Hamachi and play each other head to head the right way and then send me the BBX file. World's worst gamers do. I've got to stand up for the AI. Um the AI is poop if poop's the only thing that went in. It's kind of like poop in, poop out. Doesn't know what you want it to do. Ah, MV, but I would say this. I would challenge all of us to go back and take a look at this. Um Go back and take a look at just what you've really, you may think, I thought I had the, this thing set up right, and I did not. If you go look in McGreevy, I'll guarantee you that this was going on. I had no idea that this was default. Manager preferences, default. Default is set just like this. Occasionally sub to, to emulate real life usage and advance the different lineup. So if you only had one lineup set, it was doing its own thing with two, three, four, and five. And if your player preference depth charts were run using real life, it's going to try to emulate what they did in that season with the, who's going to get the most at bat. So if you're doing a, a an all star league or whatever, you want to switch this to player quality and rerun. No, no, and run player quality as your goal. Because that I had no idea before that this was auto set. This is what's causing people problems right here. So you go and do all the things you want with lineup, and then you've got these checked. It's going to go right by the lineup you think it wants. It's going to start doing two, then three, then four. So uncheck those. Uncheck those. And then if you don't like the way it's putting starters in or recommending people, it's it's go to player quality versus trying to simulate what they actually their real usage in life. So that should fix it. I think what Robbie's basically saying, I'm the game player. So that's really my error. So you guys let me know. We'll delete the whole game and start it over again because we have that power. Or I'll say this. Um, I don't know any other way else to proceed. Yeah, and I'm, I think we're at a crossroads. This is probably good. This is probably a good time to get in here, MV, um, and figure out we're at a crossroads where we've definitely got some different ideas floating around out here about how we want to approach this league or not approach it or level of involvement in the games and, you know, uh, consistency on that. So I think that's revealed its ugly head, at least in week one. So Yeah, I think more items to discuss, but I'm going to pull the plug on this broadcast right now, and uh, we can banter back and forth on approach and how we want to do it and human versus human and AI 
and all this good stuff. But to me, for people that are really focused on that AI side of things, I would say, hey, the best thing to do, because even having this manager on here, one manager is always at a disadvantage. One person gets to um, be the AI and the other one has to get stuck with it. So if both people are on the call or on the, the thing, uh, somebody's always at a disadvantage and the AI is going to be a factor. Um, so my opinion is <laughs> why let both, is that a better way or is it just say, Hey, nobody gets the benefit or home team or how we come into, I think we could talk around this many, many times about how to approach it. Maybe, I don't know if we've ever said head to head's a great option. Just if both people have the game set up some time and, log on Hamachi and play a true head to head where we don't have any AI impacting the game and it's all human control. To me, that's the best way to solve it. But then that requires those players to set those games up and do that. But to me, if we're going to host or try to get some human involvement, it's, I don't know any perfect way that we don't have the AI affecting anything. So Well, you guys let me know, um, and I will hold off on these two box scores uh, that are in the books uh, until I get some few future um, instruction. Yeah, we do. Or um, yeah, and and I don't know where we want to get to the point on this stuff because I definitely don't want to be doing broadcasts that are three hours for a game or people feel like they're getting some of their calls in other people aren't and all this kind of good stuff while well, we try to figure out rules of engagement during the broadcast but yeah i don't i don't have any passion to get or i'm screwing up people's games but at the same time i don't need to be doing a three-hour game where um we have to pause 20 seconds so everybody can make all the moves right that that's going to be way way tedious So I do have to run. I was going to do, I don't, what was I going to show? Exporting? I mean, if we need to export those, it's just simple. We go and export the games. So if I go to export right here, I can just tell what games. I could give all the games we played, or I could just pick those two. Export those, and I'll call them, Ar I could name them two games, Arlington, Manchester, or we decide, hey, we don't want the other, the, the six to seven game, I'll just export that one. Or I could export all of them. So it should be pretty easy to select the yeses. And then just remember, you can name that whatever you want so you can find it. I, I'd name it something that you need, like Arlington, Arlington's two games at Manchester. Boom. And then it's easy to find. Sounds good. And, uh, Sounds good, MV. I think uh, after after today, and I thought I was going to get a couple double headers in, and these would be good ones to pick. But after today, I'm like, Oof, I don't want to start screwing up everybody's games and doing that. So hey, I may just take a back seat, and I'll say, hey, whenever I'll pick up the games from now on where nobody's here, and uh, that way nobody feels like one side's getting an advantage, and I don't have. I don't have the uh, ability to get in there and jack something up. So that's going to be my path of least resistance I take. So um, with that, I'm going to um, t -t 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 see if there's any other questions or whatever. Yeah, I see. See, we're on all sides of that with AI and no making AI. So. I mean, what, what's going to happen? So if world's worth, if somebody wants no AI for making moves, no way, then are these people going to be here for every game? I mean, I, I thought we were going to do some games. I mean, we're not going to sim. We're going to have to sim some. So I thought we were going to like maybe play a game that week and sim the rest. So there's going to be AI involved, what I thought, in probably 70, 80 percent of all the games. So unless the approach is different where we're going to be um, 
having every game broadcast because that sure um, wasn't my intention. So when we look at that, um, yeah, we've got to line up for simming some, but my, my thing was the majority were going to be sim because what do we have on the, uh, let's take a look. I think it's 960. Yeah. 960 some games. That's uh, there's no way we're going to be able to do all that. So yeah, we got your manager file, hopefully to sim stuff, but yeah, it's like, we don't trust the AI. So I, I, I just don't see any difference with if I got to trust my AI in the sim games, which are 70 to 80% of all the games played, why wouldn't I be okay trusting them to watch a game? But that's just me. Because I think it might be easier to relieve the stress if uh, we go into uh, observe mode. But again, I wasn't fully... I wasn't involved in McGreevy, so I didn't kind of know. I think I paid attention to the protocol that was established doing that. Yeah, and, and I think the tendency is there as the world's works. I, I want to offer that too. Like if I'm doing it and somebody says, hey, can you you know put this defensive? I think that makes sense, right? That we should do it. But um, what I'm seeing here is it, it's starting to, I don't know if we should give anybody the advantage to make in-game decision, like running decisions, all that. I think replacements uh, maybe make sense, but I don't know. No perfect way with we're trying to have our, our uh, cake and eat it too in a lot of regards here. Interesting, Robbie, because I don't know. I've never tried to do that. Can we set it up with a delay that would allow us to, uh, you know, stop at any time, but. A good point. Well, we could watch them if we just keep hitting computer, computer, and we watch the game, but nobody gets any input. Then basically, that's what we're doing. So I think we're trying to have our cake and eat it too in a variety of ways to get some of the involvement where people feel like they can make it. So I don't know. Hopefully, Beatles will watch this and I'll defer to him because he's got the most experience in, I guess, kind of doing the hybrid approach with Ned McGreevy. So with that, hey, I'm going to call it a day. I'm, uh, I got other stuff to go worry about a little bit before the weekend starts. So um, yeah, MV, good luck. You guys let me know what you want to do. Let me know if I'm exporting two games or if I'm going to export one and I need to play that second game over due to my mistake. Um, I'm happy to entertain that. You guys just let me know. So with that, I'll catch you down the road in some form.